What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 WWE pay per views that absolutely peaked with the opening wrestling match. Now, I want to say in the Vince McMahon era, there were, you know, a few times where the show would start off super hot. Like, I'm talking about the first match, damn near steals the show. Sometimes uh, it would be a situation where the, you know, the first match was the ends up being the best match of the night and then everything else just falls apart the main event falls apart middle of the card falls apart and you know that that was a case that would happen and especially when vince was booking shows now as of recent as triple h has been booking uh the the main event p well the the ple's usually you can find two to three potentially really good match stealing uh matches or maybe like a few matches on the card that are like really really good and then uh, a couple that are okay you didn't really find too many matches that was just completely unwatchable and then usually the main events usually lived up to the hype as of recent the past few months since triple h has been running things when it comes to the uh content creation so we're gonna check out some of these moments where it started off hot and then it just fell apart appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel uh brought to you by wrestlemania subscribe if you haven't already link to the original video will be down below the opening match of a wwe premium live event should get the event off to a hot start this match should traditionally be fast paced and a warm introduction to what should be an exciting thrilling and satisfying show for viewers However, WWE have had a habit throughout their decorated history of putting the show stealer on first. Mm -hmm. The talents who have gone first have put on a classic matchup, and as a consequence, everything that comes after the opening match is paled in comparison. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE pay-per-views that peaked with the opening match. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and an on-wrestling channel. Incredible! Number 10, Hell in a Cell 2020. Upon turning heel in the summer of 2020, mm. Roman Reigns' first opponent would be his cousin Jey Uso. Which On good. paper, the idea of Jey being a viable threat to Reigns and his universal title seemed questionable, but WWE executed the storyline to perfection. Mm -hmm. The payoff to the storyline was a Hell in a Cell showdown and the two men put on a classic matchup. Facts. The match was storyline driven and it was simply a work of art. It was WWE at its very best. And the crazy thing was, the match took place in front of zero fans, yeah. as this was during the COVID-19 pandemic. The match was also an appropriate use of the Hell in a Cell structure, as the confines of the cell helped sell the emotional torment that both wrestlers were going through. Mm -hmm. The match would steal the entire pay-per-view, and whilst the other Hell in a Cell matches on the card such as Bailey vs. Sasha Banks and Orton vs. Drew McIntyre were good, they failed to match- I forgot that was- I forgot that was the first- first match yo i thought that was the main event i thought what the hell i really thought that was the main event i forgot that was the first no way hold on i gotta google that there's no way that was the first match wait a minute hell what are you what well, i'm doing this right now Hold on, man. That was the pre-show. Wow. Yeah, there was a match on the pre-show, R-Truth versus uh, Drew Gulak. That was the pre-show. But it started, I forgot, it started the show. Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman versus uh, Jey Uso. What the? What? I did not know that. I don't know why I thought that was... I don't know why I thought that was the... I forgot that wasn't the main event. That's crazy. The impact of what Reigns and Uso delivered inside Satan's structure. Number 9, Survivor Series 2013. I forgot all about that. But the 2013 edition of Survivor Series event was a massive disappointment. Yeah. The main event of the show featured Randy Orton defending the title against the Big Show. This match would be a total waste of time as nobody was interested in the match and the match quality wasn't reflective of a pay-per-view main event slot. The highlight of the entire event came with the opening match as WWE presented a traditional Survivor Series match which showcased how special of a wrestler Roman Reigns would go on to become. Mm -hmm. The Shield would team with the Real Americans to take on the all-star team of the Usos, Rey Mysterio, Cody Rhodes and Goldust. 
The finish would see Reigns win the match for his team as a sole survivor, and this was a clear indication that WWE, specifically Vince too. McMahon, saw Reigns as an ex-big thing, even back in 2013. The match was a hell of a ride, and an incredibly entertaining 23 minutes. The fans loved the action, and it was a shame that the rest of the pay-per-view couldn't match the quality on display by 10 of the aforementioned talents. <laughs> the infamous punt. Number 8, TLC 2014. <laughs> In 2014, WWE attempted to do something new and unique with the TLC pay-per-view event. Tables, ladders, and chairs would become tables, ladders, chairs, and stairs. Oh, Whilst WWE trying that. something fresh was appreciated, yeah. the new concept simply didn't work, as the stairs between the Big Show and Eric Rowan was one of the worst. <laughs> I I, so I'm glad some of these things I don't remember. Table, ladders, and chairs, and also stairs. I, I'm glad that I don't remember that vaguely. Good. This <laughs> matches of 2014. The rest of the pay per view was better, and it certainly didn't help that there was no WWE title match as reigning champion Brock Lesnar wasn't even scheduled for the event. Mm. Nevertheless, the opening match of the pay per view was oh. a match of the year contender as Dolph Ziggler collided with the late great Luke Harper. Rest Ziggler and Harper faced off in a ladder match for the IC title, and the match was critically acclaimed by fans. The match had some tremendous high risk spots, and the much larger Harper seemed to think he was a cruiserweight in the match with some of the aerial maneuvers he yeah. was able to execute. The match Jeez. highlighted just how great Harper was as an in ring talent, and some WWE fans may argue that this specific match was Harper's finest work during his time in WWE. Number 7, WrestleMania peace, 10. Now, there have been some unbelievable opening matches that have Ooh. opened WrestleMania, but the opening contest of WrestleMania 10 was truly a match for the ages. Bret and Owen Hart would collide, and the match was without question not just the best in ring match of the entire pay per view, but one of the greatest matches in WrestleMania history. The match couldn't have been booked any better as Owen secured the win, showing mm -hmm. everyone that he was just as good as his brother. Bret would ultimately go on to win the WWE title in the main event where he defeated Yokozuna, so it was a fine night for the Hart family. Yeah. The pay per view did have some other highlights, such as Shawn Michaels colliding with Razor Ramon in the ladder match, but the opening match between Bret and Owen certainly set the template on how to open the biggest show of the year. Number 6, Bragging Rights 2010. The 2010 Bragging was Rights pay-per-view pay had some of the biggest names in WWE history featured on the card. Names such as The Undertaker, Randy Orton, Edge and John Cena were all involved in the event, but it was the opening match between Dolph Ziggler and Daniel Bryan which left a lasting impression on fans. This match would be the Intercontinental Champion versus the US Champion in a special interpromotional matchup, and the match was nothing like anything else on the Damn. card. It was fast paced and much more inclined to a match scene on the independent scene at the time rather than a traditional WWE matchup. It was excellent stuff from two talents who would go on to win WWE's top prize, and it just highlighted how both men were ready for the main event scene in WWE. Number 5, WrestleMania 33. It's, it's just so crazy, man. Even now, you gotta appreciate, and sometimes I don't even think they appreciate the talent that they have on their roster. And if they just utilize them in the correct way, you have potential superstars and megastars waiting to be born. You just gotta use them correctly. E. WrestleMania 33 was one of the longest pay per view events WWE have ever delivered. Yeah. The main show of the event was over five hours in length. <laughs> As a consequence, a lot of the action in the later half of the pay-per-view was forgettable due to the crowd as well as viewers watching at home being completely exhausted. Yeah. Matches such as Randy Orton vs Bray Wyatt and the main event showdown between Roman Reigns vs The Undertaker all fell flat due to the in-ring action failing to excite a fatigued audience. Without a doubt, WrestleMania 33 peaked with its opening match as Shane McMahon took on AJ Styles. Mm. This match was so fun and McMahon and AJ worked really well no, together. They did. The match was smartly booked and McMahon was able to hold his own against a former champion. Champion. That was a fun fans match. Fans expected a great match between the two, especially because it involved AJ, but fans certainly didn't expect the match to be nah, a defined a highlight of the WWE standout event. That was a fun Number match. Number 4, Hell in a Cell 2013. It's well established that the worst match of 2019, and perhaps the worst <laughs> Hell in a Cell match of all time, was The Fiend vs Seth uh. Rollins. However, the match that opened that same pay-per-view was arguably this the was finest good. women's Hell in a Cell match this in the company history. Becky Lynch faced off against Sasha Banks for the one. Raw Women's title, and the match exceeded all expectations. It's crazy how it started so great and fell so far. <laughs> in one pay-per-view, in one show, it started off chef's kiss to fucking dog pissed. <laughs> the two decorated women clearly had the yeah, intention this of stealing good. the show and creating a memorable Hell in a Cell match that will be remembered forever. The only downside to Lynch and Banks' time in Hell in a Cell was that the pay-per-view had ultimately peaked with the first match, meaning every match that came after it had an impossible task of following such a classic matchup. 
Number 3, mm -hmm. Battleground 2017. The 2017 Battleground pay-per-view was critically panned by fans as well as notable wrestling journalists such as Dave Meltzer. The pay-per-view seemed to represent everything that wasn't working about the SmackDown product at the time and the pay-per-view stood out for all the wrong <laughs> reasons. The main event of the show saw Jinder Mahal uh... retain his WWE title against Randy Orton in a truly awful Punjabi prison match. Uh... Matches that should have been strong pay-per-view encounters such as AJ Styles vs Kevin Owens and Cena vs Rusev fell completely flat and nothing on the pay-per-view was seemingly able to connect with fans, that is with one exception. The pay-per-view kicked off with a match for the SmackDown tag titles as the New Day took on the Usos. This match was truly mm -hmm. special and it showcased just how well the two beloved tag teams yeah, worked together. They worked the two teams very well together. storytelling combined with some of the finest in-ring action to steal the show. The match was so appreciated by fans that they claimed after the show on social media that the match should have been the main event and it remains hard to disagree with this Facts. sentiment. Number 2 Backlash 2018 Former WWE Champion The Miz is often criticized for not being great in the ring, but at Backlash 2018, The Miz proved his critics wrong. And he had a pretty good match on Monday Night Raw with Seth Rollins a couple weeks ago. The Miz can actually put on a solid match. A, a solid to, well, it depends on the opponent, but he can put on some good matches. He definitely can. His feud with Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship, on, I think they were on SmackDown Live at the time, a few years uh, many, it wasn't like many years, but it was like a few years back when they started SmackDown Live and he was the Intercontinental Champion. That was great. That was great. As he delivered a performance of a lifetime against Seth Rollins. The two would face off in the opening contest of the pay-per-view for the Intercontinental title and it was such a surprise to see such a stellar match unfold. The two just instantly clicked and The Miz seemed motivated and hungry to deliver an absolute classic. It's hard to disagree with the claims that this was The Miz's greatest match as it was certainly one of his finest outings. The rest of the pay-per-view was incredibly disappointing with nothing noteworthy happening. The main event of the show saw Samoa Joe take on Roman Reigns. This match was met with profanity fueled chants as well as chants for wrestlers that weren't even WWE at the time. Thankfully, the pay per view match card had The Miz vs. Rollins, or else that pay per view could have been a serious contender for one of the worst events of the PG era. And number one, the Royal Rumble 2014. I'm glad this is on the list. I've, oh my God. This was honestly, a lot of people were coining this the match of that year. I remember watching this. And I was like, hey, they put on a great match. Even though Daniel Bryan didn't win, he's going to be in the Royal Rumble, right? <laughs> oh, my God, this match was good. After the first 30 minutes of the 2014 oh Royal Rumble pay-per-view had taken place, fans were under the impression that the pay-per-view could be an all-time classic. Daniel Bryan and Bray oh. Wyatt had just collided Ooh. in the opening contest, and the match was outstanding. Standing. It was a standout match in both men's respective careers. Facts. Once the match had taken place, the pay-per-view just seemed to fall apart. Cena vs. Orton's title match was met with disdain from fans who had no interest in seeing the match for what seemed like the hundredth time. Yeah. The actual Rumble match was insanely controversial and saw the final WWE appearance of CM Punk as he left WWE mm -hmm. the very next day. The match saw fans turn on everyone yep. in the match as they refused to put on immensely popular Daniel Bryan yep. in the Rumble. When Batista won the match, the fans oh. outright rejected WWE's creative vision to make Batista the top babyface in the company. <laughs> Ultimately, the pay-per-view became synonymous with the trend of WWE we refusing to listen to the fans and making major booking decisions that fans simply had no yes. desire in seeing. Oh, the, the sister Abigail to the barricade was so cool. Oh, man. That was a fantastic match. It's a match I, I always remember from that year, that Royal Rumble. Oh, that was so good, man. Oh, that was so good. Like I said, Vince will, you know, book something great. Fantastic. And then you see the rest of the show and you're just like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? <laughs> so comment down below. Let me know some other pay-per-views you guys can think of. They weren't on this list. That started off hot, started off great, and then it just fell apart. <laughs> during the show let me know down below but i appreciate all love and support you guys shout on channel road to 150k and i'm still the undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see you on the next one later. peace